Hi everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, um, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. I'm really excited to be sharing this week um, about a couple different things. I'm going to be sharing hopefully some rhythm um, ideas about how you can scaffold and teach kids uh, to identify rhythms, to write down rhythms, to do some of that a little bit later. I'm going to start talking um, in a second about some tech tips and also some ideas for uh, bulletin boards that you might use for um, uh, for uh, Music in Our Schools Month or Women's, Histories Month, Women's History Month. Um, there are a lot of uh, great things to be um, bulletin boarding about right now, to be, be sharing about with students right now. So I'm going to be sharing about that in just a little bit. But I wanted to start um, just a couple quick things before I go, um, that if you see anything on uh, the video today and you're like, ooh, that's cool, where can I find that? I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to the, like um, the stuff I talk about in these videos. So um, the... Uh, the bulletin boards, the links, the all the stuff that I'm going to share about, there's a links page. So if you go to the bottom of the caption of this video on Facebook or on my LinkedIn profile on Instagram, um, you can find a direct link or you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, click, click the video tab, and then there's a thing that says like Musical Mondays 2020, 2021 recap and all the links are there but there's a direct link on Instagram and uh, Facebook and YouTube or wherever you're watching this video if you're interested. Okay, so there's that. Uh, one more quick update. So um, I, as I make new resources, I try and share an update about that. So in case you're interested or you want to know more, um, I uh, just added a bunch of new St. Patrick's Day resources. Um, so especially interactive games and things, if you're interested in that, I just add some of those to my Teachers Pay Teacher store. I have a whole bundle of just all my St. Patrick's. If you're like, I just want to get everything St. Patrick, you can get, um, the bundle has like senders and uh, bulletin boards and interactive games and everything all in one bundle. So that's there if you're interested. Um, I did just add a new resource, not just St. Patrick's Day, but also non-holiday themed for Treble Clef. That's an interactive game for teaching the Treble Clef or reviewing notes of the Treble Clef. Not really teaching, mostly for reviewing or playing games to sort of uh, remember some of that. Um, some people have asked me about Bass Clef. If you're interested in that, would you let me know? So I just know like if there really are people out there who would want a Bass Clef interactive game um, for their kiddos. Um, just be interesting to gauge your thoughts on that. So if you'd be interested in that, please let me know. Okay, quick update. Last week I talked about GarageBand. I talked about how I was gonna use that with my students and I was worried that it was not going to go well <laughs> because I had never really taught GarageBand before and I was worried that I was gonna get caught up and have issues with it. And so I wanna just quickly report that uh, teaching GarageBand has actually gone fairly well. Yes, I was right in that it was uh, too much, like there were just too many options. So sort of what I shared last week was the tutorial day, the first day uh, with my students of how I took them through the app on their iPads. And they were very successful. Um, some things that I found because um, I'll just pull it up and show you just a couple of the things that I've I found along the way. When I was doing this with students, um, I shared sort of this grid. It's like the beat, um, I can't remember what they, the beat sequencer. And I found that a lot of kids will do things that they think are visually interesting. Um, and, and I totally understand, it's a very visual interface. And so what I found with students is that I needed to show them um, in my personal examples and like my think alouds with students, I had to do some of that. I had to make like fun visual examples and say like, what does that sound like? Now that I've made this cool visual thing, what does it sound like? Do I like that or not? And if I don't, what do I do to change it? So um, I had to sort of talk through the process of like, uh, this is the artistic process of like, you try it and then you revise. And then if you like it still, then you keep it. Or if you don't like it, then you change it. I had to talk through that with students. And that was sort of tricky for some of them because they just wanted to play or mess. And that doesn't make great creative work um, when you're a fourth grader. If you're just messing just to mess, if you don't have some sort of like focus or scaffold to help you. So we talked through some of that as we were doing it um, and it, it has been super fun. Um, my students were actually pretty easily able to screen record and to save um, versions of this that they're gonna share. We're gonna sort of string together and share with parents. So GarageBand has been mostly successful. There were only, there was only like one or two times where kids were like, hey, Miss Rao, I have a question. Can you answer it? And I was like, 
Um, you have to, ooh, nope, not that. Um, you have to, oh, uh, mm, nope, not that. Okay, you have, press that one. <gasps> yep, that's what you gotta do. You gotta do <laughs> to do a fix. So um, just, I'll just say, just be okay with like maybe not knowing all the answers and having to like quick research it or just mess around yourself to figure that out. But I will stand by my statement that GarageBand is too high powered of an app. It has too many options for most of what we're gonna do in elementary music. It is not really made for us. Um, it is There are things on GarageBand that you can use, but I would say it is made for middle to high to pass that. It's not really made for what we wanna do. Not that you can't use it, you can. We, we are in my classroom. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to share that because I know last year or last week I shared some of those lesson ideas of what I was going to do with GarageBand and talked about my trepidation and I wanted to report back that it didn't crash and burn too often and we had fun and <laughs> kids, I hope, learned some stuff along the way. Cool. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to take about two minutes and talk about some tech things that have been really helpful for my classroom. So right now um, we are you know, doing all of our normal learning and doing all of our normal stuff. I have some student, well, most of my students are in person at my school. I have three classes that are just remote. I don't have any mixed uh, hybrid, like some in person, some remote at the same time. We're not doing that. Um, you're either in remote or you're at school at, in my district. So that's sort of where we are. But what we're, I'm doing with my students now is um, we're sort of taking what we're doing in class and we're recording it, saving it so we can put it in, um, weave it in sort of an iMovie sort of a thing and share with parents. It's really it's really like an informant. It's like inviting them into our classroom to see what we're doing, how we're doing it, why we're doing that, um, which is very fun. There are a lot of a lot of the, the lessons that I'm doing. We could just take and do like, OK, let's do this for a performance. Let's like, you know, do a good version of it and record it and share with parents. So that's super fun to make that easier. Um, I have been recording on my phone and on my iPad. There are I mean, any of like the school camcorders and things that I could get are not going to get me a very good picture. Honestly, I'm going to get a better picture with my iPad or with my own personal phone than I would with any sort of camcorder the school has from five or 10 or 15 years ago. You know, who knows when they were bought. So um, how do I set that up? So I, I bought a couple uh, tripods and stands that have worked really well, and I just want to share a couple of those with you. So I bought this stand, and I've shared about this one before, maybe. Um, I bought this on, on Amazon, like at the beginning of the year. Um, this is an iPad stand only, and it has like the little um, base here. It extends quite a few times, one, two, so like three times here. Um, it extends quite a ways up. Um, you can also set this on things, so you can like, if you've got a box or a chair or whatever, or a table, you can set that on to give it even more height if you want. But I found that's really helpful when I'm recording with my iPad, it keeps it steady. Um, one of the things I found that I was like trying out stands and stuff, if you have like a tripod that could hold an iPad or could hold an iPhone, um, it generally doesn't hold either one very well. Like it, if it has like interchangeable parts that it could, like unless you're paying for like the big bucks for the really expensive ones, it's gonna be sort of, wobbly or, or not as good. So this is like a dedicated iPod stand. And I've done a couple things with it. I, I put my iPod, at, or sorry, iPad. Too, it's too similar sounding. I put my iPad in there to record. It's also really nice if I'm like teaching from my iPad or want it available, but don't wanna like, I, I'm really bad about setting it down or forgetting where it is or, setting it down and then moving and then it's way across the room. If, this is great to like put my iPad in there and just teach from this or keep it there at like, you know, my level so I can use it if I want. So it's nice to teach from, it's nice to record with, um, and it was not all that expensive. I mean, there's a whole, I have a whole page on my, um, my Amazon page with like links for things that you might use. And I think I put this in like the links for digital learning or ideas for digital learning, but it might be in the tech Thing, but I put a link to that on the links page. So this is a cool one. This is um, just a, a really easy iPad stand. It's extendable, you know, to quick put the iPad in, you could turn it, you can move it, and it does collapse pretty easily. So that one has been really successful. I just bought a new, um, a new tripod for my phone. 
and to, to hold my phone. It, it is just a tripod. You could put a camera or something else on it. Um, but what I it, it came with a little phone cradle and it's pretty good actually um, it extends out. I had some other things and I was like, well, I could maybe finagle this old phone holder thing in there. But what I found is if you get something that's like dedicated to what, like I said before, if you get something that's like dedicated to hold an iPad or dedicated to hold an iPhone, it's probably going to be better at doing that <laughs> um, than the things that are interchangeable. So this one is, is pretty sturdy. It's super lightweight. Um, I just got it. I've been using it to record my classes and it's really actually pretty nice. Um, it extends quite a ways. It's not that expensive. It's like maybe $14 or something. Um, the one I had had that I bought 10 years ago finally broke. And so um, this one's a nice alternative and I have a link to this on the links page too. But um, it extends quite a ways and is really good for just zipping my phone in and out and it's light and I can pick it up and move and, and I really like it. So anyway, I would say if you're doing any recording in your classroom um, and you're using your phone or using your iPad, get a good stand for them. I, t I tried for a couple of classes like the little tabletop tripod, like setting it on a bookshelf or setting whatever. And it's just so much easier to have it on a tripod that you can take and move with you. I'm, I'm not going to do the tabletop thing again. It's not worth it. It's worth getting a tripod if you're going to um, record your class. Okay, so those are my two tech ideas for the moment. If you're going to record, get yourself a good tripod. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> or have you, you have your PTA by one. You can say, you know, you can say, well, I'm going to use it now. I can use it for performances next year. Um, there are a lot of folks who would be like, sure, I'll buy you a tripod, you know, or, you know, if you have that option, it's nice to, to say, I'd love this for my classroom and, and see what happens. Okay, so tech ideas covered. Let's move on. Let's talk about um, bulletin boards. I love talking about bulletin boards. I know I'm a nerd. Most people don't like talking about bulletin boards. Um, I like talking about bulletin boards because I think they're a really wonderful advocacy tool. They speak for us even when we are not there. And I have uh, realized in the last, well, a couple years that bulletin boards can really advocate for what I do in my music program if I'm smart about it. Um, I like things that I can change out like once a month. So um, things that have that are pretty easy to swap out or easy to change. I don't have, like having to reinvent the wheel every time. So I have a couple ideas of things that you can put up really quick and easy that are great for advocacy, especially this time of year. So um, one thing that I've used, um, I made these years ago. I, I've used them off and on, and I'm, I'm just like using them every month, the same one. So I made these sets with musician profiles, and um, every month you get 30 profiles. There's a picture, there's a quick blurb and bio um, that shows the day that, or the year and they were born, near they died, or if they are still alive, it just shows that. You've got a couple options. It has like a header and stuff. But what I, what I really like is that it's the same format every month. So it's 30 profiles every month and you get a little calendar. It's just easy to like, once you've printed it and got it ready, you can just switch it out. So like January to February was like, you know, 20 minutes to just zoop, 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 switch out what I had, put down, put away one, take out another. And it was so easy. And what's fun is that kids have started uh, looking every day to see, because I have a little uh, thing that moves around. It's like a star. It says like, today is my birthday. So I put it on the person whose profile or the profile of the person who whose birthday it is that day. So like today was like four people. It was like Kesha and Glenn Miller and I can't remember the other two, but there were two other people. And so like the kids were so excited. There are four birthdays in one day. Sometimes there are no birthdays on a day, but they love seeing whose birthday it is. And they ask about them which is crazy. So like some of my students, we did a profile in class. We talked about John Williams and then it was his birthday. So they got to see him and they're like, Hey, that's the guy we talked about. Yeah. It's, yeah. Same for Johnny Cash. We talked about Johnny Cash this month with my fifth graders, fourth graders. I can't remember for a couple minutes at the beginning of class. And they saw his profile and they were really excited about it. And I found that even the grades where I'm not actively talking about musicians and profiles and their birthdays, they're still excited. So like, kindergarten walked by and they were just tapping on you know whatever because kindergarten and one girl goes I like the zombie one and I was like what <laughs> did somebody like go and like write on the is there somebody who's you know a zombie and I realized she was talking about Alice Cooper <laughs> I was like oh 
he sort of does look like a zombie. Okay, cool. So <laughs> anyway, um, it's just fun. Kids really enjoy it. Seeing different musicians who maybe they know, maybe they don't. So like in this set from February, it just came down. I just put up March today. There are some names that they're going to know, like um, Josh Groban or um, let's see. Well, there are a lot that they're probably, it's probably going to stretch them like they don't know Jackie Gleason they probably don't know Rossini they probably don't know Cheryl Crow um, but they might know Shakira they might know some of the other names in here like Leontine Price because we read a book about her so it just really depends but it gives them some names of people that they know and some that they don't and um, I've just been switching this out every month um, and like I said it comes with a little calendar so you can they can look at it this way they can look at the profile because on each profile it says the day they were born um, so it gives kids that option it's fun and, and they like seeing that every month so that's that's something that I like because it's easy and simple and you just switch it out at you know on the month and if you have people who will cut out and laminate for you like that's amazing I don't but um, if you do that's super amazing and then helps save in some of the creation process Okay, I have a link to the to those resources if you want. I, I actually made them for the whole year. So it's like 30 profiles every month. And um, you can buy a, a bundle and get them all at once. Okay, here's another one. If you want to do like the holiday thing, if you want to talk about St. Patrick's, um, you can use this for advocacy. So there's this set. Um, it's called like... Um, Thank Your Lucky Stars or Thank Your Lucky Clover for music. Angie, um, there's a link on the links page. It's on my TPT store. Okay, let's see. So this one has quotes. The harder I work, the luckier I get. But they're not just the quotes about luck. They're like, teacher luck. <laughs> so um, in the long run, you make your own luck, good, bad, or different. Loretta Lynn. I try to, I try to make them like music-ish, right? The only good luck... Uh, the only good luck many great men ever had was being born with the ability and determination to overcome bad luck. Channing Pollock. Bruce Springsteen. When it comes to luck, you make your own. So it's less like, hey, there's this luck and, you, you know, could happen or not. It's more like you got to, like, work for it, right? And then um, you, you can do this thing where you cut out and you give these to kids and it says, like, I'm lucky to have music in my life and has, you know, little Irishy. St. Patrick's-y colored kids um, or leprechauns. But they can talk about, um, I'm lucky to have music in my life, and they can say what they really like. This is cool because if you're doing music in your school's month, um, in the month of March, this is like a perfect tie-in with that. You could have a lesson about it. You could have them do it in class. You could have them take it out and bring it back. And then if you post that around all of your, you know, your bulletin board, like focus pages that you've printed out, you can put up your student answers, and it becomes a sort of cool interactive board that they can be a part of and and it has like header words it has all the little things um, that go along with it and my favorite part um, it has little notes that instead of like a note head it has a shamrock eh, or um, like a little pot of gold or a little horseshoe because I'm a nerd and I like putting you know I, I like making these things that look like their notes but they're you know holiday themed I'm a sucker for that. So anyway, um, that's another set. If you wanted to go like Music in Our Schools Month or if you wanted to just be St. Patrick's, that's another one that's easy. It's just easy to print out and put up there. And if you send those notes home with kids, they can come up with some really cool stuff um, that you can then share out. Like every kid in the school got to leave an answer or whatever. And it becomes more interactive and still does what you need it to do. Less work for you more of the kids. That one's cool because you can just put up, leave a sort of an empty bulletin board and then as you get student responses back you can fill in the empty space. So like less work for you and more of like kid response and it, it anyway. Building unity through the school. <laughs> okay, let's talk about some straight up music advocacy stuff. So um, it's music in our schools month so a lot of times people want to like do it uh, you know um just things to make people more aware about music and what we do and um, the importance of music. So one of the things that I um, I like to share is what music or, or what good thinking looks like in the music room. So I made this set a couple years ago. This is a freebie in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Um, and it's basically, it's Bloom's Taxonomy. It's taking the different levels. So knowledge, analysis, um, synthesis it, it, and it has the other set of blooms words if you use the other 
like the updated blooms or whatever. I think this is the classic blooms words, if I'm remembering right. But it takes each word and it talks about what that looks like, what that specific level of blooms looks like in a music room. Because I found that when you identify that to administrators, they're like, oh yeah, that is comprehension or that is synthesis, that is evaluation, but they can't always identify it themselves. So if you talk about you know, like what, what evaluation looks like, what that level of blooms looks like in the music room, it helps your admin. So I put these up in the hallway or I put them up in my room just so that, you know, admin and community members can see, like I am taking blooms seriously. I'm taking critical thinking seriously. Here's what it looks like in my room. So evaluation in the music room might be explanation, predicting, self-evaluation, deciding, discriminating, group discussion, defending your choice, conclusions, judging, comparison. That's all pretty, you know, that that's like uh, pretty similar to what they would maybe see in a, in a uh, homeroom, right? This is another great example, synthesis. These are some, there are some words here that are more just music. Transcribing, categorize, compose, practice, orchestrate, jam out, score, compile, revise, Im improvise, arrange, um, collaborate, synthesize. These are all things that we do in music that, that represent the synthesis level of Bloom's taxonomy that maybe other people don't see that as like, oh, you know, really what we're doing in music class is mostly the higher levels of Bloom's. I mean, we do all things, but um, showing other people what that looks like helps them understand. And then, of course, because I love, you know, the little header words, um, so it says, it says blooms in the music room, but on each letter is on a little instrument. So B L O O O O M S. But then you can put these out, and it's really eye catching, um, colorful, fun, and like I said, it's free. In my Teachers Pay Teacher store, there's a link on the links page um, to find that if you're interested. Just really easy, something to to put up. That's one that I leave out all year long sometimes um, to give you know, people ideas of what it is that we're actually doing in the music room. And that is advocacy, even if it is education as well. You know, you're educating your audience and that advocates for your program. Here's another one that's just really simple, um, just quotes that are fun quotes, but again, by people that many adults recognize. Ella Fitzgerald, you don't, <clears throat> you don't give up trying to do what you really wanna do. Where there is love and inspiration, I don't think you can go wrong. Super fun quote, simple. This could be, I mean, on a high school wall if you want it, but I think it's cool for elementary too. Elton John, music has the healing power. It has the ability to take people out of themselves for a few hours. These are just simple little posters um, with like backgrounds of like people playing a trumpet um, or a guitar or another guitar. You know, it's just like different colorful things. Give some easy little posters. Again, these are simple, print and post, done. Here's another one. This one I, I really like because I think the kids sort of recognize it. It looks like an iMessage or looks like, um, I mean, sort of looks like an iMessage or looks like a text bubble or something. So, Music is a Universal Language of Mankind by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. <clears throat> these are not all musicians. There are people just talking about music. Music expresses expresses that which cannot be put into words and that which cannot remain silent. Victor Hugo. Ooh, and the, hold on, let me see if I can find my favorite one. So, so Taylor Swift, Marilyn Manson, Bono, Ella Fitzgerald, Bob Marley. So all these famous people, Aaron Copeland, uh, Billy Joel, Victor Hugo, Dizzy Gillespie, Elvis, William Shakespeare, Beethoven, George Gershwin. So it's all these different names that they might recognize. Albus Dumbledore, ah, music, a magic beyond all we do here. So um, it's just different quotes by people, all of them in these little text bubble shapes. Um, but again, you could put it up for music in our schools month. You could put it up at the beginning of the school year. It advocates for you. It's just another way to get people interested in thinking about your classroom as a place where like, you don't just like sing and play games. Like we're learning, we're invested. We're helping students understand their emotional side. We're we're helping them understand who they are as people, you know, like, so it, it advocates for what we do and, and helps educate at the same time. And that's an easy one to just print out, put up. You, do, you don't have to go crazy with borders. You don't have to go crazy with backgrounds if you don't want. They're colorful on their own, you know, you can just do your own thing. 
Okay, and then two more, one for this month and one for next month. So the, um, March is Women's History Month. And so um, I like to talk about famous women musicians. And I have this set called uh, Divas on Teachers Pay Teachers. And it has, um, again, it just ha it's sort of like the other set that I did with the composers. It has a picture, it has their name, and it has a blurb about the person. So here, Tina Turner. Lady Gaga, Jennifer Lopez, um, Kathleen Battle, Nadia Boulanger, Janet Jackson. So it has a, a wide variety of music of, of women musicians. I actually think it has 45 or maybe 50 profiles. I can't remember how many exactly I put in there because it's like I started and I couldn't limit myself because there were so many different people. Um, but I, I did a blog post about this one and I actually split it up. So I did like 10 or 12 profiles per week. Um, and then I, I had like a little head that says like women of the week and I just switched them out every Friday. And so there are new names every week and the kids like freaked out about it because they they liked seeing that th things were changing. You know, they liked it like, oh, I know it's the same I don't know, it's like the same bulletin board, but things are different. So they, I don't know, they were really into that. But anyway, so what I, you, what you could do really easily is take plastic um, page protectors, like sheet protectors, you know, you put in like a three ring binder, tape those to the wall, and then you just pull the profiles out every week. You know, at the end of the week, you'd switch it out and change it. You could do a, a woman of the day if you wanted. Just one day, you switch it and put up a new one. Um, you could do these in your classroom, outside your classroom. I found when I put them out in the hallway, people will stop. Like I'll find like the lunch ladies like stop looking or like my assistant principal stopping to look and read about who the women of the week are. Um, and it's really fun when you have a good variety. So you have like a, a more classical name or a more contemporary or salsa or pop or rock and roll. When you have different groups of people in there, um, it's really interesting and, and it, it helps expand um, our community's understanding and their knowledge. So. Um, Anyway, you can see there are a lot of them because I did, I did enough for, um, I did enough for, that just flew right out. Anyway, um, I did enough for um, 10 or 12 profiles per week for four weeks. And so that's, that's a lot of profiles. Okay. And then one, if you want to, if you're like, that's cool, but I've already got this month covered. Next month is Jazz Appreciation or Jazz History Month. And so I have another set. Again, it's really easy. Just print and go. And these are, uh, again, the same sort of thing. Just really colorful. The, the profile, um, a blurb, and then talks about these great names in jazz. Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, sorry. Uh, Bessie Smith, Billie Holiday, John Coltrane, um, that, that give kids more understanding about jazz. This could be another one you do like a, little, a few a week. It could be you put them all out at once. It could be like a person of the day, whatever you do, it gives them a little bit more information, especially for like, if you want to have an intensive on jazz or more information about um, different musicians who are, you know, influential and uh, help shape jazz, this is a really great way to do that. And um, the colors are fun, you know, it's so you can leave your bulletin board border really boring, your background can be boring and the, the colors will pop out then. So that's easy. Or you can print them black and white and put them on top of construction paper. That's an option too. Okay, I'm sure that y'all are like bored with bulletin boards. So I'll stop talking about bulletin boards, but um, but it, it, it makes it a little bit um, more interesting when you change from week to week, when you've got something that, that morphs or shifts, or where you've got like musician profiles where kids are used to looking for those. And even if they don't read all of them, even if they just like read them every once in a while, even if, then they're looking for it. And if they see a name that they know, they might stop and read. And so like, for example, today, or gosh, it was just the other day, we were doing, you know, profile musician of the day, right? And I said, oh, it's uh, Johnny Cash. And they were like, oh, we read about him in the hallway already. Cool. <laughs> you know, so kids really do stop and they really do look and it does give them more information. And even if they think they know, maybe they don't know. So like today we did Beyonce was our musician of the day um, in fifth grade. And I was like, wasn't she in The Lion King? And they were like, she was? <laughs> Yeah, right? Like, wasn't she? Anyway, so like when you go through and you give them a little bit of that profile, it does help, you know, 
flesh out and give them more understanding about um, who that person is, how they're connected, what they did, um, and it, I think it's worth the time. So anyway, all those bulletin boards are really easy to do, really easy to pull out and, and put out on your wall. And it's just, it, it, it takes a little bit of work, um, but it, it has such a big impact. You can leave it for more than a month if you want, but I find when I switch it at the month, um, at the beginning of the month, it, it gets them more interested actively. Um, or those things that like I switch out once a week. I make that simpler by, you know, putting up the sheet protector that I can just, you know, pull out one thing and put in another. That makes it easier to switch out. But um, I, I do take the time to switch those profiles because it keeps them more interested. Okay, those are all bulletin board ideas. A couple more ideas that I pulled out as I was getting, you know, things ready. I wanted to make sure I talked about. Um, I'm also using books for Music is our, Music in Our Schools Month and Women's History Month. I'm putting out all of my books with uh, female profiles. So I've got a ton of them, um, you know, like Ella Fitzgerald. I've got a bunch of books about her. I've got a bunch of books about, ooh, let me pull it out without dropping that. Um, a bunch of books about Celia Cruz. Um, I'll pull out and put on the shelf. And what I found is that even if we've already read the book, and if it's not like a brand new revelation, Kids, when they see it on the shelf, they're reminded, oh, yeah, right, it's, you know, that was Celia Cruz or whatever, you know, um, came about it, came about it. Like, they, they, they remember things. And so it's Women's History Month. So as I celebrate that, I put out these profiles um, on the wall or I put books out on my shelf and I try and highlight that. They see those things that they've already read and it helps them remember. It helps them sort of make connections. So even if it's a book that like maybe we haven't read yet or maybe we've already read in one grade, I put it out, I think it's worth it. Even if they're just seeing it on the shelf, I think that's worth pulling out and doing. So, um, you know, for Music in Our Schools Month, I pulled out like Music Is, which we did at the beginning of the year, or um, We Are Music, which is sort of the companion to Music Is. And I put those out in sort of like my little window, like into the hallway so kids can see it. And it's, I'm not, actively reading it. I'm not doing anything with it with students right now, but it, it sort of helps those kids who have seen it, have the less, have done the lesson on that to like connect like, oh yeah, I remember that. And, and it helps them connect with like, you know, the little science is music in our schools month. Oh, and music is, we are connected. And how are we connected? You know, it helps them. So I put those books out and um, I let them look and see. And um, it's, it's a, it's a cool and easy connection you can make. Um, if you're thinking like, how do I do a lesson on this thing? Or how do I breach or broach this topic? Books are a great way to do that. So I've got a lot of books and I put them out on the shelf when it's a certain month. So like um, Indigenous Peoples Month, I put out books about Indigenous Peoples, Black History Month, Women's History Month, Jazz History Month. I put the books out on the shelf so kids can see them in those times. And a lot of times people will say, cool, you got that book. What's the lesson that you have that goes with it? And sometimes I have like a cool like rhythm game that goes with it or a rhythm connection or we do a creation thing with it. But sometimes I just read the book and we talk about it. And I've, I've, I've always felt guilty about that. Well, not always, not recently, <laughs> last year. So I'm like, you know, I, at first I felt guilty about like, well, but if I don't have like, what's the song that goes with that? Sometimes it's okay just to read the book and talk about it. And that's a good lesson you know and so there's some books that like we just read and we talk about we learn more about that person we learn about them in in history and context we talk about Celia Cruz and her life and how she relates to someone else and maybe we'll watch a video of her you know but you don't always have to have that like ooh, now let me do this little quick little rhythm poem like that doesn't have to be there for the book to be a cool book to read and to share with your students one book that I really like that I am going to work in this next month um, is this one called A is for Audra. It's, um, uh, it's a cool book that's like an alphabet book. So each page is a different person, but like perfect for Women's History Month. So the first one, it goes A is for Audra, who awes and amazes with each line and note and all the critics sing praises. And it says Audra McDonald as Billie Holiday, Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill 2014. B is for Barbara and Barbara too, both versatile vocalists equal, both versatile vocalists equaled by few. Barbara Streisand as Fanny Bryce, Funny Girl, Barbara Cook as Marion Peru and Music Man. C is for Christine's crystal clear intonations for which she won Tony's and standing ovations. So just a super cool book on every page is these gorgeous 
illustrations um, and it talks about different famous musicians, famous women of Broadway. Um, and just super cool. So it, on each page you go through and you get somebody else, oh, some that kids will recognize. You'd be like, Adina Menzel, she sings for Elsa in Frozen. Um, you know, so it's cool. And on each page, they, they don't just have um, the person pictured here, but they also have down at the bottom, it says who it is and the role that they played. Um, so that's sort of cool to share with kids. And it would be easy to like pull out a video or two if you wanted to share more about that person. At the back, there's like a, the world's tiniest little bio about each person. So um, let's see. You can find Donna Murphy has been nominated for five Tony Awards and, for, and won twice for Passion and for The King and I. Um, or Jesse Mueller is a four-time Tony Award nominee, winning for her portrayal of Carol King in Beautiful. So it has little profiles about each person, uh, about each person featured in the book, but it also just has like the world's coolest um, illustrations and is super fun and it's an alphabet book, which teachers always love when we share those. But it's absolutely perfect for March because March is Women's History Month and it's also Music in Our Schools Month and it's also just a super cool book. So it's pr it's pretty new. I don't think you're going to find it on the used book websites. Um, so you probably just want to get it new, which I know is, is more expensive. But I was trying to find the publishing date. It's like 2020, 2019. It's pretty new. You, you probably won't find it on the used book websites. OK. All of those resources, I hope that they're helpful for teaching about or sort of for music advocacy, for teaching, for um, sharing with students. Um, I found this year, in a year where I can't sing, where I can't do, you know, dances in the classroom, the more musician profiles I share, the more excited they are about them and the more they want to learn and the more they know. And my kids know more about genre, know more about um, instruments, they know more about the music making process than I think they have ever known. And it, it, it makes me start thinking now about like, how am I going to incorporate this next year? Like, how am, how am I going to like dial back some of the time because I have more time now to elaborate? How am I going to dial this back but still do it? Because it's to such a really cool part of, of this year and what we get to share with kids. So um, I hope these resources were helpful to give you a few more ideas about how you can do that in your classroom. Okay, let's talk about some rhythm things. I've been doing a lot of rhythm stuff this year. Um, it starts with echo back and forth and um, with a lot of different grades. Kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. We're doing rhythms where like all clap and they'll clap and I'll clap and they'll clap right and you do different levels of body percussion I pat they pat I pat they pat um, and and what I found is that the more we do the more fun stuff gets to happen the more I get to challenge kids again this is another year where like we're not singing we're not dancing so we're doing so much with rhythm and I wanted to share just a few things um, with you of what you could do so what I've what I start out the year with is a lot of echo and a lot of back and forth just like they do exactly what I do. Right? And that's easy. And that's an easy warm up. It'll keep them excited for a while. My older kids get a little tired after a while. What do I do to mix it up? Well, then I'll say, okay, I did a pattern this long. Now I'm going to do a pattern this long. This long. And I'll extend the pattern from four beats to eight beats. And then the, that's more tricky. Or, or we uh, mix levels. So if you did all clapping for, for a while, that's one level. You do all padding for a while, that's another level. You do all stomping for a while, that's another level. Then start mixing, clapping and then stomping. Clapping and padding. Padding and clapping. Clap, pat, clap. You know, like you start mixing, you do more, right? What I really love is when I start having them transfer. And so when you get into critical thinking, we talk about transfer of knowledge. And there are a couple different kinds of transfer. There's vertical and horizontal transfer. And, and you can transfer from like one discipline like music to history. You can transfer concepts. You can transfer ideas. You can also transfer within music. So like tr if you're taking like a, an excerpt, like a uh, something you work on and then you apply it in a piece, you're transferring that knowledge you did in the warm up and you're applying it in the rehearsal later. That's a transfer. It's a, it's a transfer within the discipline, but it's a transfer. So one of the things that I like to do with kids is I, I say like, uh, you know, we'll be clapping back and forth or body percussion, whatever. And then I go, oh, I am so old. I am so tired. I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't clap. I'm just too tired. 
How about I tell you the rhythm and you clap it? So instead of me doing it and you just, you know, copy back verbatim, I'll say it, you clap it. Ta, 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 di, ta. And then they go. Ta, di, ta, ta, di, ta. This is a transfer because they're taking the, the oral stimulus. They're, they're taking the information they're hearing and they're transferring to what that would be in a clap. They're not seeing the exact thing that they have to copy. So it's not really like a, a, a mirror back sort of a thing. It's like they're actually taking and transferring that idea. Um, and it could be, it, it, that's really easy to do for some kids and for some kids not. So I always do that simple at first and make it more complex. Right, and so then um, they they can transfer that back, or I could say, okay, now switch me. I'm gonna clap. You have to speak it, and then go ta 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 di ta. That's trickier. That's trickier. So you do that after you have quite a few examples of like I speak, they do. I speak, they do. Right, and that's something that's that's pretty easy, but it also helps them think about like what is the clap, you know, you know, how, what does that sound? What does that turn into? You could also say like, I'm, I'm going to say it and you can either clap it or you can pat it. You got to choose. Or you can stomp it. You got to choose. ta di ta ta di ta And then they get to do it, right? Those are easy transfers for rhythm, easy for kids to handle at first. These are all like little things we do in warm-ups or little activities, not nothing too crazy. Um, but eventually we're going to you know, move on to sort of trickier things. Another one of those transfer things you could do where they're sort of taking that idea and flipping it around. Um, instead of like, I say it, they do it. Um, I could say, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clap. You're going to take that clap. You're going to flip it around in your head and it needs to come out as a pat. So if I go like this, you would go, I'm going to clap it. You have to translate that into pats in your head and turn it into pats, okay? And so then we would try a couple of those. So I would go like, and they would go, right? That's easy. And when we start, when you start, I'll clap and they'll pat. I'll clap and they'll pat. I'll clap and then pat. And then we'll flip. I'll pat, they'll clap. I'll pat, they'll clap. They like that. They feel... You know, like, ooh, I got it. It's good. You know, they, they, it's a it's a fun activity for them. You could do lots of different levels of that. I clap, they stomp. I stomp, they snap. Whatever. There's lots of you, there's lots of ways to play around with that. Um, if you really want to mess up your fourth and fifth graders, you could say like, okay, if I'm clapping, you pat. If I pat, you clap. And then like mix it up so one time you clap and then they have to pat, and the next time you pat and they have to clap. Or you could do. And they have to flip that in their head. That is tricky, but they, they can sometimes do that. But that's another way to just take that rhythm and think about it in a different way. It sort of makes me think of, don't hate me, it sort of makes me think of um, common core math. Like you're just thinking about the numbers in a different way. You're thinking about, I know some of you are like, common core, don't talk to me about it. I, I don't really care. I don't teach common core. So, But I, I think the idea is cool of like, you know, common core is like thinking about numbers anyway, math anyway. It's like thinking about things in a different way and how all the different ways you can understand and put things together. I like doing that with rhythm though. And so like, you know, I clap and they clap back exact verbatim or I do and they translate it or I do and they change it. And that's all just different ways to get around the rhythm and understand it better and feel it in your body and just feel better at it. I've also talked to, um, this year about how I'll have them do rhythm reading or how they'll do rhythm reading on a body percussion staff. I've talked about that and all the ways that they can like take that and, you know, like uh, change it up and um, the ways that they can um, do the reading and then perform it. Like I've shared quite a bit this year about that. Um, what I've also started doing with some of my grades is having like I'll you know, because they're, they're so familiar with the Todd's and the toddies and the rests and everything that we're performing that now I'm having them write them. And there are a couple ways to do that. Uh, with my kinders first and second, I don't start with them actually writing out the rhythm. Um, kinder and first, we start just by identifying sounds, identifying a long sound versus a short sound. And I saw this really cool thing that Aileen Miracle did a couple years ago um, where she had them take um, popsicle sticks and they had to um, they had to lay them out whether they were long sounds or short sounds. Um, and so she took, well, she took you know you could do hearts, you could do stars. These are just really easy Ellison like die cut 
uh, creative things I do and or that you can do and you take popsicle sticks and I did not until I saw this alien workshop Mrs. Miracle's music room workshop I had no idea these existed but um, I've been using popsicle sticks for years um, did you know that little half ones exist I know you're like David you're a fool how did you not know that um, but I didn't so anyway there are little small half sticks right so that's really fun for long sounds and short sounds so if you have a long sound you could do this if you have a short sound you could do this you could then do like two short sounds on one star on one beat and you could like boop, boop, you know like and at first when I do this with my kinders and firsts um, I make it super obvious if it's a long sound it's boo you know if I'm playing it on a shaker or I'm playing on a piano or I'm playing it whatever it is long and short is boop Right, like it is obvious, right? And then we start having other examples, and, and I break it down, I only do one sound at a time. You know, instead of like, do, 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 I don't do that, I'm just like, boo. Okay, was that long or short? You know, like we just do the one star at a time, one example at a time, to give them a chance to sort of really scaffold in and really understand, just as we're going slowly, long versus short sounds. So here, here's how I do maybe one. So I would have kids, you know, put these four stars out in a line and then um, on the floor in front of them, they've got long sticks, they've got short sticks and I would play one sound, you know, hold on. I've got a recorder here. Okay, everyone, here's your very first sound. If it's long, put the long stick. If it's short, put a short stick. sound right that would be long right and the next one okay next star if it's a long star if it's long so put a long stick if it's a short time put a short stick do you need to hear that again did I go too bad yeah okay that's short and we would just go star by star and then at the end once they've laid out their four you know because they're doing one sound per star once they've got their four stars I say take a long stick use it as a pointer and let's check together and so we, that time we had long, long, short, short. Great, okay, clear those off, let's do a new set, right? So then um, we do um, a different example and we'll do, you know, like I'll, I'll, instead of playing on the recorder, maybe I jump on the electric piano and I do um, uh, an organ sound or I do uh, some other sound on there. I do a shaker or I do um, uh, a guiro. You know, there, there are different ways to do the different sounds. Um, but then once they're good at it, they can identify long and short like so easy. Then I say, okay, you're doing great. Now, instead of giving you one star at a time, I'm gonna give you two stars at a time. So you might hear a long sound and a long sound, or you might hear a long sound and a short sound. Or you might hear a short sound and short, you know, like you, but you, you're gonna get two stars at a time, okay? And then we build up to four stars at a time. And then, you know, once we're there, then, then we're golden to move on to the, to the next option. Uh, on Instagram, what is the COVID version? Maybe they would have to write the long and short. I, I have bags, little baggies of, of sticks and stars, um, enough for every kid. I made a lot to start and the sticks are not expensive and the stars I just cut with my die cut machine. So I, I hand out little baggies to each kid. And um, my school district says as long as the materials sit for, it, they can be sanitized or they can sit for 24 to 48 hours and they're okay to reuse because the research seems to show that COVID doesn't last on surfaces um, or transfer by contaminated surfaces. So my district is okay with either sanitizing the materials or letting them sit for an extended period. So I just let my bags of stuff sit. So so yeah, so the, the trick that I do then um, though is that uh, you on the on your whiteboard take some of these stars and put like a magnet on the back and then you can stick that up and then you can, as you're going along, you can put your answers up and you can um, show them whether it's a long or short. And the sticks are so worth it because when I was a young teacher, I jumped right into whiteboards. And that does, it's bad news for a couple reasons because then they're fighting with, oh, my marker doesn't draw. Yes, it does, but it's light. 
or oh you know then I, I've got this eraser in my hand or I'm redrawing and drawing and redrawing and playing around and and the marker and the the whiteboard and the, all the logistics of getting that out and putting it away it's just too much extra stuff it's like trying to learn to drive on like an 18 wheeler it's like there are just too many things to think about rather than the one thing I want them to think about. And so the sticks make it really easy to just very simple. It's either long or short. Here are your only options. And if kids play with the sticks in between, like I, I don't care. Great, they're, you know, because some people, you know, they'll build little houses or they'll, what like, I don't care. As long as they're also doing the assignment, great, you know. Um, so anyway, so we build up to do long sounds, short sounds, easy peasy when we get to the point where we're identify like we're, we're connecting this to rhythms or we're talking about you know ta's or toddies then we we switch you know you could I, I like the long and the shorts um, sticks for long and short sounds what's really fun is you could even do like two short sounds on one star oh that really confuses them you're like here's star number three boop boop is that was that one long or was that is two shorts an option? I never tell them two shorts on one star is an option, but you know, two short sounds on, on one beat, it, it like sets them up for, you know, eighth notes. Anyway, it that's always super, super fun. Okay, then when we're ready, we graduate, and I chose a different die cut. Um, instead of doing stars for this, I did leaves. So it's leaves and sticks, it's sort of very fall themed, but you know, the colors or whatever. Anyway, so instead, um, stick, or sorry, stars, I do leaves so I know that the set is different. Um, the leaves bags only have long sticks. There are no short sticks in here. So, um, so what I would do with these ones, then when you have a ta, you could do this for a ta. When you have a ta D, you know, they can make a ta D. Um, when you have a rest, they can do um, sort of something like this for a rest. Um, and this is really fun too. You can have, you know, what uh, you can use, I use this for first and second graders, um, mostly, sometimes for older kids too. But this, this specific thing with these bags of different sticks, I do mostly with first and second graders. But to identify it, like they hear the sound um, and then they make the rhythm. So we could just do sounds. I could do like do, 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 and they could still do sort of what they did, just identifying the sound. You could go leaf by leaf. You could do a set of four. You could do two at a time, whatever you want. You could also at this point, if they know the terminology, if they know rhythms, you could say like ta, 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 di, ta, and they just make them with the sticks. Again, when I was a younger teacher, I started them in right away like drawing with pencil or paper or with whiteboards and erasers. They don't need that. It, uh, they, kids spend way too much time trying to color in a note head and that is not what's important. The skill I want them to learn is identification of rhythm from an oral example. And so giving them the sticks pulls out the like worrying about drawing the note head or whatever. That comes later. Like once we are really good at this, then I'll hand out whiteboards and then we take just part of a lesson just to make ta's and ta dees and rests, like just to draw them. And then we'll go into a part of the lesson where like I give them an example and they create, or, and they have to dictate it. But breaking down the skill, first doing it with sticks, first like physical sticks, and then um, doing like stick notation on whiteboards, um, which if, you know, if you're not familiar with stick notation, instead of going out and drawing Okay, let's see if I can see. Instead of going out and drawing a whole ta, they just do just the stem. You know, so for a ta d, for sorry, for a t t, whatever you call it, for eighth notes, instead of doing that, they would just put just this. And if you start with actual physical sticks, like literal sticks in a bag, they're okay with the stick notation. And so um, my progression for students is identify sounds with short and short and long sticks, move to a bag with just sticks, talk about uh, quarter notes, eighth notes, rest, um, identify and do that with sticks. And then when they're really good at the actual physical sticks, then we move to whiteboards. We do stick notation, stick, you know, drawing with sticks. And then we might do standard notation and then move into real full notation. But but I, I do the physical aspect with the sticks first because it really solidifies the skills I want before we actually have to draw and, and like do any of that.
But the sticks are so much fun. They're easy to use during COVID because it's, each kid gets their own bag. They're not sharing. Um, the sticks are inexpensive, so you can buy them very easily, even the half sticks, to, to get enough for each kid. It, it's easy to do that. Okay, I saw a couple questions. I'm going to go back and, and hit those before I run out of time. The older kids have a hard time doing the steady beat and performing the rhythms. What do you suggest they do to get their brains to make the connection? Lots of practice. Lots of practice. Simple stuff. Different different options. So um, it depends on what you ultimately want them to do, but... Um, Simple rhythms, reading it and performing it, reading it and clapping it, um, just rhythms back and forth with you with no visual element. I mean, it's just taking out the scaffold again, like what do I need him to get to? And then doing lots of examples along the way. I find that a lot of body percussion, a lot of back and forth really helps. A lot of like me saying it, they do it helps. Um, but the more practice they get, the better they're gonna get at it. So, but the steady beat is different from the rhythm. So, you know, it, it's, my kids also have a hard time with steady beat. It's just lots of practice and lots of doing. That's sort of a tricky answer, but it, it's hard to answer your question without knowing exactly what it is that they're doing or, or what you want them to do. But um, while well, playing the recorder, then I would say take out the recorder aspect, work just on the rhythms, and then move it into recorder. Because recorder is like 17 different things. If you're having them read, it's reading, it's figuring out the notes, it's figuring out where their fingers go, it's breath control, it's holding, it's sitting, it's moving, it's reading along, it's tracking ahead, it's too many things. So if their problem is the rhythm, take out the recorder part, figure out the rhythm, and then go back to add the recorder part back in. I hope that helps. It depends on what it is they're doing with the recorder, but I hope that helps a little bit. There was something back here. Uh, when we use the sticks, I tell them if they do the activity, they can have at least three minutes to build with them. Oh, cool. I always say, like, if, if you've already put down your answer, then you can do sticks. But if you are if you haven't put your answer, you can't be building. you gotta you got to make sure that you do the stick part first. Um, looking for more kinder activities. I'm excited to try this with students. Brooke, I would say you could try this with kinder and then also first and and second, I mean, like they, they're all about it. They're happy to do the tactile thing. So um, try it with multiple grades. Depends on your students. My, in my, so my older kids like doing the stick writing, but it's just different. Brooke also said, sorry, it's off topic. I love the music notes and they look like a pot of gold. Recently purchased the St. Patrick's Day bundle and I'm not seeing those. Am I overlooking them or are they sold separately? No, they are in the bulletin board that says like, uh, thank your lucky stars or thank your lucky clover for music. It's part of that bulletin board set. And if you can't find it, just send me an email and make moments matter at gmail.com and I'll let you know. Um, I'll make sure you get them. Okay, I think I got the questions and the talking points that people shared about that um, hopefully were helpful. Um, so th those are just some rhythm things you can do, but um, I find that the more that we do at an early level, that's just fun um, and um, identifying sounds and playing around sounds, the more we get to do that early, the better they are a little bit later on. So I hope this gave you a couple ideas of things you could do and some ways that you can incorporate that. Um, don't forget at uh, the beginning, I talked a little bit about those tech things. So if you're interested in any of those um, iPad or iPad, iPhone stands and things and mounts. I have a whole page on my um, Amazon wish list of like stuff that you might consider if you're if you're interested in that. And all the links, everything I've talked about, should be linked on the links page. Okay, thanks everyone for coming along tonight. If you have questions, shoot me an email at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com. Um, I hope I'll see you next week for some more ideas, um, lesson ideas, and things you can use in your classroom. All right, everyone, have a great week.